Hello. Hello. So tell me, since when is your daughter running fever? So she is having fever since three days. Okay. So when was she absolutely all right? She was absolutely all right uh, uh, till yesterday morning, day before yesterday morning. Okay. And then. When? And in the evening she started having fever. So how much was the fever when it started? It was low only. She was just slightly warm, but I still gave her medicine, paracetamol. And the then fever. it came down after that? No, in fact, after that fever went up. In the night, fever was very high. Okay. And how was she whole of yesterday? Yesterday, whole day she had fever. But fever was just not coming down only. You mean it was not reducing also after paracetamol? No, it was reducing, but it was uh, not coming down to normal. Okay, okay. And so suppose you gave paracetamol and it reduced, then when did it come back? So every 5-6 hours fever was coming back, but too high fever. Okay. And in that phase when the fever was reducing, mm -hmm. how was she? She was fine, she was playing. In fact, yesterday I was telling her to take some rest, but she was still playing whenever fever used to come down. Okay. And today also, is the fever better or it is no, the same? It's same, high only. Okay. And what about any other symptoms like cough, cold, nothing, vomiting, only loose fever. motions? Only nothing, fever. only nothing. Fever. Is she eating all right? Yes, whenever fever comes down, that time she eats. Anybody in the family has fever? Yes, I have just recovered from fever. She's got all her vaccines? Yes, sir, on time. And has she been generally in good health so yes, far? otherwise she's good. Let me examine her, then I'll explain everything yes, in detail. Yes, sir. Hello friends, I'm Dr. Rajesh Chokhania, general pediatrician from Bandra. And today we will be analyzing a few interactions with patients with fever to see how we can interpret their history. So let's look at this first interaction. In this interaction, the first point that we want to convey is that we must always make it a habit to ask. So when the patient said that the child is running fever for three days, we make it a habit to ask was the child absolutely all right before that. So we confirm the duration of the symptoms. The second thing which is very common in practice is as you noticed, this patient said that the fever was for three days, though the fever started day before evening and the patient is come to the doctor today morning. So it's actually one and a half days, but is misinterpreted as three days. So these small cross examinations are required to get the correct duration. Now we come to analyzing the fever itself through the history. So we normally ask six questions which give us a lot of information about what could possibly be the cause of the fever. So the first is about the onset of fever. Again here in this interaction the patient said that the fever started as low grade fever but soon thereafter became high grade which means that the onset of fever is to be taken as the first 12 to 24 hours of the fever not just the point at which the fever started. Secondly, as we have made a point in our earlier videos, paracetamol should not be given at low fevers because it invariably fails. Now, what does this high fever at onset mean? It usually means one out of four things. It could be a viral fever or a bacterial infection at the site of entry of germs, which means classically tonsillitis, dysentery, UTI or lymphadenitis. The third thing could be malaria and the fourth thing could be an immune mediated fever. So these are our four possibilities based on the fact that this was high fever at onset. Then we come to the next question of response to paracetamol. Again if you notice parents tend to always say that the fever is not responding because their end point is coming down to no fever. Whereas what you and me are looking for as we have discussed in earlier videos is relief of discomfort and some reduction in the intensity of fever which was definitely achieved here. So the response to paracetamol was good which means the interpretation is this is possibly non-bacterial fever so points to a viral fever. The third point is about the interfebrile 
period and the child's behavior in that period. In this case, the child was playful and active, which again goes against a bacterial infection. In a bacterial infection, the child will be sick or dull in the interfebrile period. The fourth question is about the pattern of fever. Here you notice that the parent said that the fever was coming back every 5-6 hours. This is known as a rhythmic pattern of fever where the rhythm is of the effect of the antipyretic. This can be seen in both viral and bacterial infections. There is another rhythm where the fever is once in 12 hours. This kind of a rhythm is seen in collagen vascular diseases. And finally, there is a third pattern of fever called erratic fever, which may suggest malaria as a possibility. The fifth question that we asked was, is the, pat is the fever same even today? Which means what is the trend of fever as the days pass? Now, actually in this interaction, it has only been one and a half days. So it's too early to decide on the real trend. But when the trend is improving by day three, day four, it points to a viral fever. When the trend is worsening on day three, day four, it points to a bacterial infection. And if the trend is the same on day three, day four, it may suggest malaria or an immune mediated fever. Finally, we asked about accompanying symptoms and there were none. So the point is that even in the absence of accompanying symptoms, it is possible to diagnose viral fevers based on all these other characteristics which we just discussed. Contact history is important in children. In this case, it was there. But even if it's not there, we realize that we can diagnose a viral fever. And then the rest was just about completion of good health status in general. So a normal host, a well immunized host and the child was eating well in the interfebrile period, again saying that the child was not toxic and this was a viral fever. Hello Gayatri, so since when are you running fever? I have high fever since 4 days. Okay, yeah. so 4 days back means 5 days back you are absolutely alright? Yes. Okay, On and then how did the fever start? On first day it was 101. I took paracetamol, the fever came down, but after 5-6 hours, the fever is coming again. Okay. Yeah. So, is this same pattern going on for these 4 days? Actually, in fact, it is worsening. From yesterday, it is high fever, 103-104. But after taking paracetamol, the fever comes down little bit, but not to normal. Like, if I have 104 fever, it comes down to 102.5. Within 2 hours, it comes, I feel very cold and shivering. Okay. Yeah. And uh, is there any other complaint like throat pain or stomach pain or loose motions or anything? No, no other complaints, but only fever is there. Okay. Yeah. And when the fever reduces a little, that time do you feel better? No, I feel very tired and uh, just lying down. I feel like. Okay. Yeah. And are you able to eat well? On first day, I was able to eat well, but from yesterday onwards, I don't feel like eating. Okay. So now in this second interaction, what we noticed is that this is an adolescent girl who started with moderate degree of fever and which was responsive to paracetamol to begin with. But as time passed by day 3, day 4, this fever has worsened in intensity. So it is a rising trend of fever and it is now no longer responsive to paracetamol. So both these factors, the rising trend of fever suggests a bacteremic bacterial infection and the absence of response to paracetamol again points to possibility of a bacterial infection. We notice that the adolescent is not feeling good in the interfebrile period for the few hours that the fever is reducing. She is feeling tired and feels like sleeping. So she is sick interfebrile which again points to a bacterial infection. As far as the pattern of fever is concerned, it is continuous only all, all around and therefore that can be both in viral and bacterial as we already said. Finally, the trend of fever is rising trend as on the fourth day and there are no other accompanying symptoms. 
So we have concluded that this is a bacteremic bacterial infection which has not yet localized to either the throat or the tummy or the urinary tract etc. And therefore the common infections that we consider in such situations are meningitis, pneumonia and typhoid. So in the absence of any tachypnea or meningeal signs or chest signs, this is most likely to be a typhoid type of an infection. Good morning Mrs. Shinde. So tell me, uh, since when are you running fever? So I have fever since 3 days. Okay. We started day before yesterday in the morning when I woke up only. That uh -huh. time I was feeling cold. Uh -huh. And after that suddenly I got a high grade fever. When I checked on thermometer it was showing 104. Oh, okay. Then um, I took a paracetamol. But after taking also a fever did not come down only. It was like that only. Okay, okay. And uh, then sir I, I wanted to take brufen for such a high grade fever. But I did not have that time at home, so I ordered it from a chemist. But uh, they did not deliver it for almost like two hours. And by the time they delivered, fever automatically came down to normal, like after okay. two hours, like within those two hours. Okay. And then how was the fever after that? You kept getting fever? No, the whole day in fact I was fine. Uh, but the uh, fever did not come like again. But in the night, like day before yesterday night, again fever came. And that too, hybrid only. Okay. This time you had any shivering? No shivering, but I was again feeling cold. Okay. But not shivering. Okay. And then again I took paracetamol. And uh, within two hours then fever came down. Okay. And how was yesterday? Yesterday, I, I took off actually yesterday, uh, thinking that I might get fever again in the morning. But I was absolutely fine throughout the day. Like I did not get any fever. Uh, I could even do my office work also uh, in the daytime. But by the evening, again in the evening I got fever. Okay. Any cough, cold, any throat no, pain? No, no. Any no, body sir. ache, headache? No, sir. No. And today did you get fever? Yeah, today morning. Uh, again, I got fever. Okay. It is same high fever high or it fever is lesser? Only. No, high fever only. Okay. okay. And are you feeling weak or you feel like eating? How is your appetite? No. Uh, when I, there's no fever, actually I could eat and I was feeling okay only. Okay. 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 Let's see. Let's examine you and then decide what do we do yes, about sir. this. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. So in this third interaction with this patient, what we noticed is that this patient has started with high fever, 104. So as we said earlier, possibilities are viral, bacterial at site of entry, malaria and immune mediated fever. But then what we notice is that the response to paracetamol was not predictable. The patient actually didn't respond to paracetamol and then the fever seemed to have come down on its own. Further. We noticed that during the interfebrile phase between any two peaks of fever, this patient was feeling absolutely fine, was eating, was doing her work. So these points against a bacterial infection. When it comes to the uh, rhythm of the fever, what we found, this is where the clue lies. So the patient said next morning she expected fever and took an off, but there was no fever the whole day. So what the history suggests is, that the fever seems to be coming very unexpectedly at odd times. So there is an erratic pattern of fever and it is this erratic pattern which suggests that this could well be malaria. Finally, the fifth question was about the trend of fever. So the trend is still the same even after three days. As we said earlier in viral infections by three, four days, the fever starts getting better. In bacterial infections, it starts getting worse. But here it was the same. So again pointing to malaria and the absence of accompanying symptoms again rule out a viral infection. So what we notice is that viral and malaria both start with high fever. But then there are differences. It is the erratic pattern which suggests malaria. Of course with the other points adding to the interpretation. A word about the shivering. If you noticed in the three interactions 
the adolescent who seemed to be heading for typhoid started getting shivering on the third fourth day of the fever as the fever started rising whereas this patient with what looks like malaria is not shivering but just feeling a cold again pointing to the fact that shivering is not always useful in diagnosis and we have to look at the other factors of fever to analyze them